You know what I had almost forgotten about? Tequila Wolf. It's one of those mysteries that has remained so elusive throughout the years that it had tucked itself very neatly into the very back of my mind. But this small panel in chapter 1120 was all that was needed for me to reach into the back corners of my brain, pull this bad boy out, dust it off because tequila wolf this bridge is interesting and it's important and it's doubly important ever since the major reveals at egghead island which i think means that we are now able to figure out the questions surrounding this mysterious bridge so tequila wolf has only been mentioned or shown in the series a handful of times which contributes to why i think the bridge doesn't get talked about all that much it still remains very mysterious we don't know all that much about it. But this doesn't mean the bridge isn't important. In fact, I think this bridge is closely intertwined with so many of the series' deepest lores. Because Tequila Wolf is one of the oldest surviving artifacts that we have in the One Piece world. The construction of the bridge has been going on for centuries. Seven centuries, in fact. Placing it right alongside, or at least right after the events of the Void Century. The reasons and the purpose as to why it's been created in the first place remains elusive and even the fact that it still hasn't been completed and the very unclear and very confusing reasons as to why it hasn't been completed those details are still shrouded in so much mystery and therefore this bridge remains so relevant to the current events of one piece i guess in this way you could call tequila wolf the metaphorical bridge that connects the past to the present but another reason we know tequila wolf to be important to the series is because this is the island that Kuma sent Robin to. We know Kuma intentionally sent each of the straw hats to different locations for different purposes and you could argue that perhaps Kuma only sent Robin here because he knew the revolutionary army were in the vicinity, the mission to rescue the slaves at the bridge underway and he knew that they had long been looking for her. But I don't think it's quite that simple because Tequila Wolf was an island important enough for Oda to include as part of Odin's flashback. It was one of the very few locations featured in that glimpse we got of Odin's journey with the Roger Pirates. Why have the Roger Pirates passed by this mysterious island if it isn't more intricately tied to the rest of the story? Oda chose to showcase this island for a very specific purpose. It's not just a throwaway island, he has plans for this island. Even the science of Weatheria, the sky island that Nami was sent to during the time skip, that science has been recently revealed to have a much larger significance due to the recent events at Egghead. And I think we can make similar connections between the reveals that we've received during the Egghead Island arc to the mysteries surrounding Tequila Wolf. Which is also why this was the perfect time for us to be reminded about this mysterious island by way of chapter 1120, which included a very small panel of Tequila Wolf, so that this island doesn't just fade into oblivion as we get deeper and deeper into the final saga. And if you like where we're heading, or if you would just like to make sure that this video and this channel doesn't also just fade away into oblivion, then please help out by liking the video, leave a comment, and please do subscribe. Help this channel get to 100k subscribers, and I will forever show my gratitude by forever blabbering on about this favorite, greatest series in the world, One Piece. Okay, firstly, what do we know about Tequila Wolf? Tequila Wolf is located in the East Blue. It's not a standard island, it's described as a bridge top nation, and that essentially seems to suggest that it's the construction site of a bridge that has been ongoing for 700 years. We were first introduced to it in chapter 524 when Robin was sent here by Kuma. The bridge is being built on order of the world nobles and the reason cited for its construction is that it's supposed to connect islands but we're not told why exactly and we're also not told which islands. The revolutionary army seemed less concerned as to why it was being built and more focused on the fact that slaves were being used and abused for its creation. Those slaves that are being used consist of criminals and citizens of nations that aren't affiliated with the world government. Tequila Wolf as a nation, as a bridge top nation, seems to move or shift. It's a little unclear as to what this means exactly, but it's said that the ruins that are scattered throughout the length of the bridge exists because the nation moves along alongside the construction of the bridge. And this is 
also suspected to be the reason why the bridge remains unfinished. So it's almost as if as the construction of the bridge progresses, then the nation moves alongside it so that it can build the next portion, but then the previously built sections crumble. Like I said, that part hasn't been all that clear in the series. Anyways, the Revolutionary Army disrupted the construction of the bridge two years ago when they went and freed the slaves, including Robin, and that was the last we saw of it in the present timeline, until very recently in chapter 1120, where it was confirmed that construction has resumed. So like I said, chapter 1120 got me started thinking, really thinking about Tequila Wolf. Obviously, because I just saw a panel of it, but this panel alone doesn't actually tell us all that much. It seems the construction is ongoing, which isn't really too surprising. The Revolutionary Army's attack did occur two years ago, and it wasn't necessarily confirmed that they had halted all operations, because as I keep saying, the information we receive about Tequila Wolf is very, very thin. But this panel and this chapter made me start considering Tequila Wolf in the context of other reveals that we've received in the Egghead Island arc, because this now makes Tequila Wolf very important, and to some extent, I think I think a lot of the questions surrounding Tequila Wolf now makes a lot of sense. First of all, the first starting point, the first major reveal that we can connect Tequila Wolf to is the revelation that the world is sinking. Because now that seems to explain the need for a bridge. The world government wants a massive bridge to connect all islands because the world is sinking, because the sea levels are rising. This was one of the major reveals we received during the Egghead Island arc. The fact that sea levels are rising, and this will eventually result in the One Piece world as we know it to sink. And under those circumstances, the construction of a massive bridge makes sense. Because the world government knows that sometime in the not so distant future, there will be no such thing as islands as we know it. But hopefully, they may be able to keep some people above water, they may be able to save some people from sinking by the use of a massive bridge that stands way above water. And that also explains why the construction of the bridge started 700 years ago. Because the 20 kingdoms would have actually known all the way back from then that the world was sinking, that water levels were rising, because Vegapunk told us that a similar incident occurred back then, that after the use of the ancient weapons during the Void Century, during that Void Century War, they have set in motion the eventual sinking of the world. And then this also feels very much in line with Vegapunk's other comments that the war isn't actually over. There is another impending war that will happen at some point in the future, that there will be further use of the ancient weapons that both Joy Boy and the 20 Kingdoms must have known about, and then this will continue to exacerbate the rising sea levels until the world and it seems like the 20 kingdoms, it seems like the world government started preparing the bridge in preparation for that eventual world sinking. So the way that I'm picturing this in my head, following the Great Wall, following the 20 kingdoms, or should I say the 19 kingdoms after they took over the red line, recuperated their losses, and then started settling down. Society started to form again after the majority of the initial ones sank. Those who survived started forming a society again, the world government had people to look over, rule over, they create marriage they form the world government, and then they start debriefing and they start planning. And this all, I'm sure, would take some time. Let's give them a hundred years. It was a massive world war after all. A lot of people would have died. So 100 years after the Void Century, they start planning, they start debriefing, and they know that this war that they just had isn't over. They know that in the future, there will be another great war. Another instance where they're going to have to use the ancient weapons again, and that this will inevitably mean that the water levels will rise again. And so then, they decide to prepare for this incident by commissioning the construction of a bridge, a massive bridge. But then here's a question. Why create Tequila Wolf when the Celestial Dragons, all the world nobles, 
already live on much higher ground. Because we know that they already live on the red line. And the red line is so much taller than Tequila Wolf. And in fact, although it hasn't been directly confirmed, it seems that the reason why the Lunarians were dispossessed of their ancestral homes was because the Celestial Dragons wanted to escape the rising sea levels, and so they took over the red line that stands much on top of the world. So then why create Tequila Wolf? The thing is, again, we know so little about Tequila Wolf that it's hard to say. For example, we don't actually even know how tall this bridge is, so we can't determine for sure whether it would really even be tall enough to save people from the impending rising sea levels. But based on another panel that I found, it does seem like the bridge is about five times larger than this ship. But then how tall is this ship? I'm gonna guess that this is just a standard marine ship. It looks like one of the marine ships. And according to a recent chapter, we know that the marine battleships is about 60 meters tall. And look, scaling is pretty inconsistent in One Piece. So these are all just rough estimates. But Oda has clearly given us a ship for reference in this panel so that we do at least get a sense of the size, the mass scale of this bridge. So we're not gonna waste any valuable information that we do do have. So then, if we say that this bridge is about five times larger than this ship, and assuming that this ship is the same size as a marine ship, that would make the bridge roughly 300 meters tall. And then that makes perfect sense, because even if the sea levels rose by 200 meters, which is how much the water rose by during the void century, as we were told by Vegapunk, then the bridge would indeed be usable, even in the case of another great war involving the use of the ancient weapons. In fact, it's almost as if the world government planned and calculated very precisely. They thought, well, last time we went to war, the water rose by 200 meters. If we use the ancient weapons again, we'll have to assume that we're going to have a similar effect on the world. But let's leave some buffering room, shall we? Why don't we build a bridge that's 300 meters just so that we have a bit of a safety gap? And now this is all well and good in determining whether the bridge would actually be able to save people. But I guess this doesn't necessarily answer the question of why the world nobles would want this bridge, why they would need this bridge if they already have the rest. Red line. My immediate answer is that Tequila Wolf is perhaps to save the other civilians who aren't perhaps world nobles. Given how after the void century, other kingdoms, other people still managed to survive the great war and still managed to survive the great floods, the great rising sea levels, even though they weren't celestial dragons, one can only assume that there was something, some way that ensured their survival. Perhaps it was something similar to a bridge, perhaps it was Zunesha or even the ancient giants pulling and moving islands to safety. Although even Oz was only 60, 67 meters tall, so I think he would have struggled in that rising sea levels as well. In any case, I still do think the world government are trying to ensure that in the future, this future great war and the rising sea levels won't wipe out absolutely everyone. Now, I don't think they feel this way for any altruistic reasons. I don't think they truly care that deeply about the world's population. But I do think they'll still want ordinary people, ordinary citizens around, because who's gonna do the farming? Who's gonna do the menial tasks? Who's going to make sure that the celestial dragons have plenty of food to eat? There will be people to fan them, to transport them. They want to make sure that there are other people that they can keep as slaves, as lower class citizens, so that they, the celestial dragons, can have comfortable, peaceful lives. And maybe this is how they even got the buy-in to start the project in the first place. Maybe this is how they ensured workers for the project 700 years ago. They initially told the citizens, this bridge is in your interest. We never know what's gonna happen in the future. The sea levels might continue to rise. You need a bridge to survive. You need a bridge to be able to travel to other islands. It's in your interest. It's for your protection. And then over the years, over the centuries, because of the grueling work, because the events of the 
4th century turned to secrets and was lost throughout history, people started to forget why this bridge was being built. People started not wanting to be part of this project because it's such grueling work. And so then it became a job that was just designated to criminals and to those people who aren't affiliated with the world government. It actually sort of reminds me of the Night's Watch in the Song of Ice and Fire series, the Game of Thrones series. The Night's Watch and serving at the wall was supposedly this honourable job to protect the rest of the kingdom from the White Walkers. And then over the years, over the centuries, as the White Walkers became more of a myth, serving at the Night's Watch was something only for people who were criminals, those of lower birth, and overall it just lost its honour, it became a bit of a joke. But anyways, how about the mystery as to why this bridge is not yet finished? So let's unpack this a little further because it's a little confusing for me. Bunny Joe explains that the ruins are the result of the whole nation, as in this entire island, moving alongside the bridge as its construction progresses. I don't even know what that means. It's as if the island keeps moving as the construction of the bridge progresses as its completion progresses but paradoxically this means the bridge will never be completed because of the instability because of the island keeps moving i don't know what that means are you interpreting this the same way that i am i mean how does that even make sense is it because the bridge isn't actually an island because the keel wolf has to be fair never be called an island its introduction box claims that it's a bridge top nation and so that's supposed to be distinguished from the island because Tequila Wolf is sort of wherever the bridge goes or wherever the current construction of the bridge is taking place. So does that mean that the island itself isn't actually rooted anywhere? Is it just a great piece of floating mass that's perhaps powered by something underwater? You know, almost like how Zoe isn't a rooted island, but it's moving with Zunesha. So Tequila Wolf is being moved by something underwater that we can't see? Or is it the case that Tequila Wolf is wherever the current construction of the bridge is taking place. Because we were introduced to Tequila Wolf as being in the East Blue, which also leads me to another train of thought. Isn't it strange how all of this lore-rich pieces of history, lore-rich figures like Goldie Roger, they're all from the East Blue. I mean, why is the East Blue so damn significant? But I think that question deserves its own discussion in its own right. So going back to what I was originally saying, is Tequila Wolf in East Blue actually? Or more accurately, is it permanently in the East Blue? Or can Tequila Wolf be anywhere the bridge, the construction of the bridge is taking place? Because during Odin's flashback, we saw the Roger Pirates passing by Tequila Wolf or passing by a great big bridge that was very reminiscent of the Tequila Wolf. But we saw them pass by this bridge after visiting Tom at Water 7 and before they go to Fishman Island, before they go to Sabori Archipelago. Pelago. And that doesn't make sense because how or why would they pass by Tequila Wolf in the East blue when they would have already been in the Grand Line if they had just been at Water 7. Which goes back to my point that Tequila Wolf is just where wherever the construction of the bridge is at that point taking place. The bridge itself is much longer already, or at least what has remained, what has survived the construction of the bridge is much longer. And just at that point two years ago when Robin was sent to Tequila Wolf, construction had been going on at East Blue at that point in time. But another compelling question we have to ask is if this bridge can never be finished, if it can never be completed because the way that it's being built means that some sections keep going to ruins, why do the world government, why do the celestial dragons continue with the building of the bridge? And I guess my only explanation to that, well actually I think my explanation to that would have to be twofold. Firstly, the simple reason is that the bridge is a good deterrent. It's a symbolic testament, it's a symbolic showing of the world government's strength. The fact that they have the resources, they have the power to build this massive piece of infrastructure and it becomes a good deterrent to people from committing crimes because people wouldn't want to be sent to Tequila Wolf. People don't want to have to become slaves and labor, do hard work at the bridge. And then this also coerces non-world government affiliated nations 
to become world government affiliated because they don't want their citizens to have to become these slaves. My second explanation would be that the world government don't actually need this bridge to be completed. Like we've already established, they have this red line. The red line that is 10,000 meters above water. But if they want to save some people, not all people in the world, but you know, just a limited number of people to make sure that they can continue to keep profiting and keep benefiting from their work, from their resources. They need to have a limited number of the population to survive. So they have this continued resource, this continued pool, a labor pool, if you like. And so then this bridge, even if it is unfinished, what has been constructed of this bridge will be able to save that requisite, that required limited number of people, even if the bridge isn't something able to save entire islands. In fact, I'm sure that they wouldn't want the bridge to save everyone anyways, because if this bridge was successful, especially before the world started sinking, that would make traveling between islands super easy, meaning that coordination and collaboration between the islands would become super easy, and that would mean that people could easily communicate with each other and then they could start planning things like attacks and rebellions and revolts together. And as per the words of renowned dictators Julius Caesar and Napoleon, divide and conquer. Now those are just my speculations but I do welcome your thoughts. And because Tequila Wolf is only featured so little in the series itself, I've had to rely on some historical and real life inspirations to further build my understanding of the bridge and here's what I found. The construction of a massive bridge built on the back of slave labor intended to connect entire islands, that definitely does seem to be reminiscent of real life elements. Most notably, the Burma Railway, which is also known as the Burma Siam or the Burma Thai Railway, which is often cited to be the historical inspiration for Tequila Wolf. Now, for those of you who don't know the Burma Railway, this is a 415 kilometer or 258 miles long rail railway between Thailand and Burma, now known as Myanmar, and this railway was built between 1940 to 1943 during World War II in order to aid Japan's efforts during that war. Japan's plan was to use this railway to supply its forces stationed in Burma instead of by sea because Japan lost much of its naval strength during the war, and Japan also planned to attack British forces in India once the railway was completed. And the construction of the railway is remembered in history as one of Japan's great atrocities during its colonial and World War II era. Because Japan abducted and otherwise coerced Southeast Asian civilians called the Ramusha, and they also recruited prisoners of war from Allied troops to construct this railway. And this already doesn't sound pleasant, and I won't go into the detail about the brutal treatment of the forced laborers and the general terrible living conditions that they were subjected to, but to give you an idea of this harsh reality, over 11% of the Southeast Asian civilian laborers and almost 30% of the allied prisoners of war died or were killed in Japanese custody. And this is a massive rate when you compare it to the death rate of allied prisoners of war in German camps during the Second World War, which was around 4%. And aside from its connection to One Piece, I think in general it is an important part of history, so I do recommend you all to read about the Hellfire Pass, which was a particularly difficult cutting of the railway, which was was especially noted for its harsh conditions and the massive loss of life that occurred here, hence its reference to hell. But I'm sure you have been able to see many of the similarities between the Burma Railway and Tequila Wolf. They both refer to massive construction of infrastructure that allows transportation between countries without having to rely on travel by sea, a railway in the case of Burma Railway, and a bridge in the case of Tequila Wolf. They both relied on forced labor, and in the same way that Tequila Wolf is being built by criminals, that seems to be sort of akin to the allied prisoners of war, whereas the civilians of nations not allied with the world government, that seems very much like how Japan coerced Southeast Asian civilians to work on the Burmel Railway. We have the brutal treatment of the laborers, which we did see during Robin's flashback, and even in chapter 1120, we see the guards using whips. There were very harsh living conditions more generally, where ironically, or by contrast, the 
tropical location of Burma meant extreme sweltering heat, whereas in One Piece, Tequila Wolf seems to be a cold, snowy winter island. Also in both cases, there are massive ruin sites. In One Piece, this was explained to be the result of the island shifting or moving, whereas in real life, there were many sections of the railway that fell to ruin and have now been swallowed up by the surrounding jungle. But apart from the lore and mysteries implicated by the historical inspiration, I just want to first mention that I think it's interesting, and I don't know if brave is the right word, but respectable. I think it's respectable that Oda has incorporated a piece of history that doesn't shine very favorably on Japan. If it is the case that Tequila Wolf is based on Burma Railway, which I think it is very likely to be, I appreciate that Oda is acknowledging the horrors that humankind have inflicted on each other, including his own mother country, especially because Japan is often accused of historical revisionism or historical distortion, and and how they play down their own atrocities during World War II. So it's good to see that Oda is recognizing and almost condemning this painful period of history. In saying that, I don't think Burma Railway is the only historical influence. We have so many great huge construction projects like the pyramids in Egypt or the Great Wall of China which all involved the use of slave labor, all resulted in huge losses of life, all included terrible working conditions that can be likened to Tequila Wolf. And in all of these scenarios, these buildings or these sites, they've come about because of the goals and desires of the elite, like the ruling pharaoh or the emperor. And this came at the expense of those in the lower classes who actually had to do the hard physical labor, which is the same thing in One Piece because we know that it's the celestial dragons that have ordered the building of the bridge. The other very obvious real life connection is in the name of this bridge. Tequila, as we know, is an alcoholic drink which is made in Mexico. And as to why this name was chosen, I think that's less obvious, but I think it could be a reference to Mexico being a land bridge between North and South America. Or perhaps it's a reference to the Bridge of Americas, also known as the Free Bridge, which is an international bridge that connects Mexico to Texas. And immigration from South to North America is another historically and politically charged topic. So it's also possible that Oda was drawing from this real life issue as well when it comes to Tequila Wolf. Racial tensions and class divides are topics that Oda does often incorporate into his story, which is very relevant in the case of the relationship between the US and its Latin American neighbors, as well as the treatment of those of Latino heritage in the US, which I think is also particularly relevant in the case of Tequila Wolf, because this involves again slave labor, and again the subjugation of civilians of nations that aren't allied with the world government. So I think it's also very symbolic and telling that we have a glimpse of Tequila Wolf in chapter 1120. This is a very important part of Vegapunk's message. This is at a point when Vegapunk is saying that although history is written by the winners, eventually the losses and the sacrifices of the losers will reach the world. And now I may be reading way too much into it, but for me, I feel like Oda is paying respect to the losses and the suffering of the victims of history and he's using his story to allow us a glean into the voices of those who lost in history. And now I know that that was a deep dive into the history and into the real life connections, but I do think that that is always very relevant to understanding One Piece. And in this case, very relevant when you consider all the racial tensions at play, which has also been heavily suggested to be very important to the lore of the series, almost emphatically stated as such by Vegapunk very recently. Anyways, the point being, this little panel in chapter 1120 means a lot more than it seems. And this mystery in general, the mystery of the Tequila Wolf, that has way more significance now now that we know more about the world's lore, more about the fact that the world is sinking, and I'm sure that this mysterious construction of a never finishing, never completed massive bridge is very closely linked to what happened during the Void Century and what is now coming our way. Thank you so much for listening to another one of my blabbering thoughts. If you have thoughts of your own about Tequila Wolf, let me know by leaving a comment below. If you enjoyed the discussion, make sure to like. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to help me get to 100k subscribers. Thank you to all of our Patreon and channel members for your continued support. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.